don't have, but a message that they heard from someone else. Yes, yes. So we're going to have to stay on point with the original message, which is the death, the burial, and the resurrection. And I really believe that God is going to turn this church, turn the nation towards ministering on the blood, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. There's another generation here. The Bible says in the book of Judges that there was a generation that came that didn't know God. So it's, us to, it's up to us to remember him. Sometime I wonder, God, what would be the legacy that I shall leave? What type of mark shall I make in my life? We all have to take account. For every man shall give an account. Amen. Amen. Of his own work. Amen. That's right. I can't give an account for profits. Come on now. Let's take a person. She can't give an account. For that's right. That's right. Amen. 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 So we we're, we're pressing, Paul said, Toward. towards a mark. Yes. For the prize mm -hmm. of a high call. He said, I press towards the mark. Yes, yes, yes. For the prize of a high call. He said, There's a crown yes, that is laid, laid up. Laid up. Oh, you yeah. laid up. And you can tell those that get the crown. Because then he turns around and Jesus says, now I gave you a crown. Mm -hmm. Paul prophesied about the crown. Mm -hmm. Now cast your crown mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. and worship me. Worship me. Worship. You know, worship is not just the process of lifting your hands That's right. and opening your mouth, but it's, it's a daily walk. That's right. Amen. A walk of worship. Amen. Jesus yes. walked that thing. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Jesus was a was a was a master worshiper. Yes, he was. Yes. He said, "They that worship him yes. must worship him mm -hmm. in spirit and in truth." And in truth. So, right. even though you get into the spirit, there is a truth that there you have to walk in. Hallelujah. Amen. He was a master. He was a master at that thing. Yes. But we get tired. We get weary. We, we make excuses for life. And then life gets the best of us. Because we have said things that we give life to. Mm -hmm. Just like a spider. Mm -hmm. That spider cast that web. So mm -hmm. Every time we say something, we're casting a web. Well, I don't like this, and uh, she shouldn't have did me like that, and I wish this wouldn't have happened, and you know, I'm waiting for things to change. And before you know it, you have cast the web to the north, south, east, and west. Mm, caught up in it. And so you're trapped <laughs> in the oh, very web yes. that you have set. The Bible right. said that. Let us know what the Bible Come says now. now. Thou art snared. Come on, Come on. By what? The your words of your mouth. Thou art snared. And when you begin to think about that, you set a trap for yourself. For your own self. You dug the ditch for yourself. Amen. We all do it. The flesh gets tired. If there's a portion in the lesson tonight where I begin to see two realms. Well, we know that there's two realms. We're on page uh, 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 65, chapter 7 of School of the Prophets. And it came to pass the metamorphosis of prophecy. Let's get married. Now, testing, testing. when I was thinking about this, I began to look at the different realms of the spirit. And I had this vision in my mind that the flesh is walking in a dimension. And the spirit is walking in a dimension. And that, that the flesh and the spirit is housed in one house. And so the flesh struggles with the spirit. But yet the Bible says that my spirit shall not always strive with me. Strive is the same word that you can consider as strife. Yes, so in other words, 
you're having strife with yourself. When your flesh and your spirit is not lined up together, they're striving, they're strife. And the Bible says in Proverbs, these, these things do the Lord hate and hate. Seven is the Bible. Is an abomination. Lying tongue, lips. Feet that shed, hands that shed innocent blood. That's right. But let's go to this uh, chapter here in, in the metamorphosis of prophecy. Chapter 7. Uh, and when we look at this, it takes us in the book of Genesis chapter 4 and verse 3. And when you read that verse, it says, in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought forth the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. That, this is the way it starts out. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. We begin to see that in the prophetic tense, there, there are ways to unlock the mystics of truth. There is truth, and then, then there is the mystery of truth being revealed. There is a truth that we are the kings and the princes of the earth. Because when you get into the book of, of Psalms, it says, Out of Egypt shall come princes. And we know that Egypt was a place where the Cushites were. But it says that we unlock this truth. And we go from veil to unveil. In other words, we begin to allow the revelation of the Holy Spirit to speak to us. So that that is covered is now uncovered. And the Holy Spirit begins to give us the understanding and the interpretation of what God is saying. Is the mic's on? We find that the second paragraph of King James says the process of time in the NIV and the Amplified, it says uh, in the same verse, with the course of time, mm -hmm. so it came about. So we see in the process of time, the Amplified version of the Bible, the same verse is rendered within the course of time. The NAS reads, so it came about, and the TEV of the Bible tells us, after some time. No matter whether you're in the course or in the process. When you're in the course, you're saying that you're traveling. When you're in the process, you're saying that something is developing. So it says, when you look at this in the third paragraph, it says that the scripture says that there is a time factor involved in revelation of the prophetic word. There's a process. There's a course. Time is coming. Time is going. And if you remember last week when we was discussing time, we were talking about prophetic time on last week. And we began to talk about that there's times and there's seasons and how that time is not season, but season is a time. So now, tonight, we're talking about how time comes to pass. And we're also talking about the process that it takes for time to get to you. And even though there's a process that time takes when it's getting to you, there's a process that you're going through, but time is just merely the hand of God moving in eternity, which is your present, your future, and your past. That's why the Bible says that I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm your yesterday, your subconscious. I'm your today, your consciousness. And I'm your tomorrow, your today, your conscious, and tomorrow, your consciousness. Consciousness, a continuation. Conscious, present, and subconscious past. God said I'm working in all three of those dimensions oh, yeah. of time in your life. So he began to say, as you mix faith with your prophecy, there is a process allowed by God to bring you into your experience. Some people never experience or they don't, they want to separate the experience of God's process with what God is doing. You can't separate the process from the miracle. 
Because the miracle is going to be in the process. If God said, I'm going to give you a new arm, and he speak to that arm, there was a process that was taking place while the arm was growing, but all you did was stuck your hand in here and it came out whole. There was still a process. It was veiled because you couldn't see the process taking place. So now he says the word becomes the experience of the flesh as it comes to pass. Tabernacling with you, moving with you. That word tabernacling means that it's moving with you. Watch this now. Above all, you enter into his rest. The prophetic word grows from a seed to the fruit of his representation. And on and up, and watch this. The purpose of Passover was to move you into his rest. Remember, I went over that Monday night. The purpose of Passover was to move you into his rest. The purpose of Passover was to move you into his rest. Watch this now. So now you are transformed from witness to becoming a witness. So you was witlessness. Now you become a witness. Because the process of time, the experience of the flesh being transformed now brings the miracle into your dimension. In scripture especially, when you look at the Old Testament prophets, as in 2 Kings 25 and 1, these words are often said, and it came to pass. These group of words suggest something. That something came, something happened, and something occurred. These three things are happening in your life. Something is coming. Something is happening and something is occurring. It suggests something in past tense not moving into the future. There's a place in life where you stop growing. Physically, you stop growing. So the body no more enters into that realm of time. But the eternal, when I stop growing, when my feet stop enlarging, when my height stop, I stop in eternity in that place. It was a process that I went through. But my mind is constantly developing. My spirit is constantly developing. My soul is constantly developing. Look at what David said. Praise the Lord on my soul. It's an eternal realm that you're in. Because the soul can never die. The spirit can never die. The flesh, this mortality will put on immortality. And the dead in Christ shall rise. The flesh can't rise because it's going back to the dirt. But when he's saying the dead, he's saying the dead in the consciousness of God. That has accepted the will of God for their life. That has allowed their soul to be delivered from the damnation of this world. David said, I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So now we're in the process of time. There's something coming, something happening, something occurring. When does time stop? Time stops. When you graduate from the 12th grade, there's a stoppage of time. When you graduate from college, that period of time stops. When you get your PhD or master, that period of time stops. There's 360 degrees in a circle. You got one. There's 359 degrees left. Time doesn't stop until you can fulfill the 360 degrees. Everything is based on psychology now. If God wanted mm. in prophecy the expression mm. and it came to pass relates to the fulfillment of the prophetic word. What was prophesied happened as was spoken by the prophet. It was fulfilled mm -hmm. to the letter. In the prophetic discipline Oftentimes, when we receive the word, we do not know how that word 
will come to pass. And this is what people struggle with. Very true. Many of us ensnared by the fact that we're trying to depict how it should happen. When it should happen. Or the combination of, of, of both. She's a false prophet. And, uh, they spoke into my life and, and they hurt me. And, and this didn't come to pass. Sometimes we get in the mindset where we want to, to set the combination for God. I remember one time I was in Ohio preaching and in this church uh, I went into a trance while I was preaching and, and when I was standing up before the people I began uh, to see a vault and when I saw the vault I saw uh, 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 the lock or, or the, or, 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 or the uh, uh, tumblers and the numbers on the lock and I began to prophesy over the lock and the tumblers and right there in the service, the vault opened. God was showing us the mysteries that are locked up. And only spirit can unlock it. Only spirit can unlock it. This is why when you come into the presence of the prophet, sometimes uh, it's one thing to be with a fake prophet. It's another thing to be with a real prophet. Because uh, sometimes God... I want to prepare you to be a better man and a better woman. And therefore the sacrifice and the suffering is greater. See, uh, when, you're, when you're growing uh, what they call in the South light tobacco, light tobacco don't need the same effort that it takes when you're growing dark tobacco. Let me put it like this. <coughs> The process of picking corn is not the same process as picking cotton. Mm -hmm. Even though they both are in a field. Mm -hmm. Cotton has spurs on them. Mm -hmm. uh, cotton would cause you, your hands, uh, to be cut. Cotton would cause you, uh, you may pick a few ears of corn and your basket is full. But you may have to pick two or three rows of cotton to make so many pounds. Oh, yeah. you, do you understand what I'm saying? So the weight of glory is heavier in one dimension. But the weight of glory in the cotton was more expensive than the corn. Oh, yeah. But it took more of the cotton to make the weight in pounds than it did to make the weight in corn. And therefore the process it caused you more pain to pick the cotton than it did the corn. Yeah. There's a process. There's a process. Sometimes we get in the mindset where we want to set the combination. Let's look at that last paragraph in the middle. It says, yeah, this is impossible to determine just how God will fulfill mm -hmm. that which was spoken to us. Mm -hmm. I, I hear the Holy Spirit. He said, yeah, Sarah laughed. Uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an old woman, but I'm going to give birth. She laughed. She didn't understand the process. Mm -hmm. You understand? I wouldn't understand the process. <laughs> <laughs> It says, it is comparable to mathematics. Let's look at these mathematical problems. You can use different formulas to arrive at the same results. For example, 4 plus 1, 3 plus 2, 5 times 1, and 10 times, divided by 2 all equal 5. Different formulas, but the same results. For example, the methodology used to arrive at the answer is different, but the bottom line is the same. Read. Top of the page. Arithmetically, the properties and relationship can be seen in the following equations. 4 plus 1. 7 minus 2, 
Five times one and ten divided by two all equal five. It all equal five. Mm -hmm. that's, that's eight different ways that God has showed you to come to one conclusion. So you don't know how God is going to move, how God is going to work. That's right. In complex properties, example, algebra, the distance from negative five and a positive five is equal to ten. When you're, when you're moving from a negative state to a positive state, it may seem to take a long time. However, know that you are moving from one state to the next over a period of time. Please note the principle suggests that you are that there are combination factors critical to the fulfillment of the prophetic word. Thus, we must seek to see as he sees, hear as he hears, etc., while standing in faith till the end. To go from a negative expression of the God kind of life unto the real, you will have to go twice the distance, being committed to the Lord until the set time. I mean, if you really think about this, here it is Moses was in Egypt. He leaves Egypt. Walks through the desert. Without God. And comes to a destiny. A set place in time. Fixed in his future. The length of time that it takes him to go from Egypt into Midian, he is being stripped. Say a process. A process. process. He is being stripped in the journey. He's being stripped as he walked. His body is being tormented by the heat. His soul is is being convicted by the fact that he had psychologically killed the man physically. Mm -hmm. Now he is running and he's he's trying to figure out, am I going to survive? Am I going to make it? Now he comes to a destination in time where for 40 years before he hears from God, 40 years tormented over his brother. 40 years tormented over his father. 40 years tormented over what he's lost. Because it took 40 years mm -hmm. to get all of that out of him. Mm -hmm. So now the 40 years have passed. After 40 years, Now God reveals himself to Moses in a bush. Now the bush is on fire, but yet it's not consumed. It's, they, they, they say in history this is called a, 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 a theophilophy. It's a word that represents that something is supernaturally happening. Where the bush is burning, but it's not consumed, representing Israel. So this is the first revelation that he gets of God. God is trying to get his attention. And so now, after being in the desert for so long, he's thirsty. He's hungry for something more than what he's been experiencing. Now he's been married. He's He's been in Midian for a while. He's taken on a wife, which is a Cushite, mm -hmm. burnt face one. Mm -hmm. So he's married to an African American. Mm -hmm. An African. Mm -hmm. So God is trying, uses the woman to settle him down and bring him to a place to bear children and try to forget what has happened to him in the natural. But now God has seen that he has grown and said, now I'm going to deal with you in the spirit. When the student is ready, the master, the master of the mm -hmm. Yes. Everybody cannot be a student. Come on, Apostle. It's one thing to be excited 
It's another, it's another thing to submit. So here Moses submit. He's in the process of understanding his assignment and understanding God. These two things are happening to him at the same time. Say in the process of time. In the process, in the process of, time. of time. Let's go to the next paragraph. Read. In most animals, the young are very like the parents and become adults by a series of gradual changes. In some, however, the young animals are completely unlike the adults and only develop into them after they have undergone changes, causing considerable alteration in structure and, and this habits. This is what God was doing to Moses. He was causing considerable alterations to his attitude, his disposition, mm -hmm. to everything that he had been through. Read. Such development from the young to adult stages is called metamorphosis. The term metamorphosis suggests transformation to change in form or nature. When the word of the Lord comes to an individual, transformation must take place before they will attain its fulfillment. Now watch, when you, when you go in and you begin to study transformation, remember in Romans it says, and be not conformed to this world, mm -hmm. but be ye what? Transformed. When you look at that word transform, it means metamorphosis train change transfigure this is in the greek now to change to transform transfigure or metamorphosis change is in metamorphosis transfigure is in metamorphosis Transform is in the metamorphosis. All of this Moses was born to. The person who receives the prophecy is not the same person who fulfills it. Because, see, we're not, remember, we were talking last week about time. And we were talking about the beginning of time and the end of time and everything in between. So all of us are constantly developing to what we're going to be. The student that is consistent becomes greater than the student that rarely shows up. Look at a chicken. From an egg until it's hatched, the chicken experiences development and growth stages at four days, eight days, 11 days, and 21 days just prior to the hatching. So it picks its way into the new prophetic environment of the Earth's atmosphere. After a process of time, it is fed and nourished into all its full stature and becomes a potential meal for a table. Now let's get into metamorphosis. Occurs in the simplest things. A chicken from the from the store must go through the process to become a meal. Mm -hmm. Depending on the flavor you desire. Mm -hmm. You will add certain ingredients to season the chicken to suit your personal taste. In some cases, so is God within us. Mm -hmm. He takes us through a process, a mold of mm -hmm. preparation. Mm -hmm. Listen to what Jeremiah says. He said that we're on the potter's wheel. Mm -hmm. He said, come, let us go down to the potter's house. And let him work a work. On the wheel. And the Bible, and Jeremiah said it was marred in the master's feet. Mm -hmm. Some of us, we are marred in God's hand. Mm -hmm. We may think we're all of that, mm -hmm. and we're not. All right, all right. And so God is constantly dealing with us about oh, issues yeah. and, 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 and thoughts oh, and discernments yeah. and, and ideas and and people and places and things. Why? Because we're marred in his hand. And shall he not work a work to what he has created? Oh, yes. Wow. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. That's good. Here begins to talk and discuss about the preparation uh, to deliver us mm -hmm. as a meal for a nation. Mm -hmm. He's preparing each of us. To go to a nation, to, 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 to be able to, to share with a nation. Watch. Look at Joseph. Who became an answer to 
his brother. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Uh, in family, in, in fulfilling the prophetic word, mm -hmm. we will become as God's God in purpose. Listen to what he's saying. Amen. There's a process that we're going through now. And uh, then we talk about Joseph, right? Joseph, Joseph has this dream. Now, when, 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 when Joseph has this dream in Genesis 30, 37, and, 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 and the Bible says uh, in verse 5, and Joseph dreamed the dream, and he told it to his brother, and his brother hated him. So now you got to deal with the process of hatred. Yes, you do. This is what's his own blood. Yes, you do. Yeah. These are people in your family that will hate you. And then when you go down a little further, the first time, he says, and he dreamed yet another dream. What was God trying to do? God, God was trying to give him the confirmation oh, yeah. that the dream that you're having, I'm going to give it to you again. I think I was telling you last Sunday that sometime when God puts something in your heart, I won't write it down. I'll wait to see if he's speaking to me again. Yeah. And he will. These are secrets that you learn about how God deals with you. All right, all right. So true. So true. Gosh. My God. So now, he has to deal with the fact that, okay, I, I, I know my brothers don't like me, but uh, Joseph's in denial because he's the younger brother. Right. He's, you know, he just, <laughs> just having fun, skipping along, jumping rope. He's a little bit. Riding horses. Yeah. Come on. Look, but when you look at verse 19, it says, and they said one to another, behold, this dream will come. Sometimes people will wait until you're coming oh, their yeah, way yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. to begin to plot and, sure and to begin to plan. Yeah, Listen, it says, come now, therefore, and let us slay him and throw him into a pit. Mm -hmm. And we will say some evil beast. How hatred is that? Mm -hmm. That's very hatred. Say the process. The, the process. process. This is the process of the dream. Dealing with the hatred. Then you have to deal with the feeling of that hatred. How people treat you. And what was God trying to do? He was trying to develop him for the set time. That's right. See, he's in the process of time. But he didn't move into the set time until he moved into Pharaoh's house. He didn't move into the set time. Until he moved into interpreting Pharaoh's dream. He didn't move into the set time until Pharaoh had made him king or ruler of all Egypt. Now he's in a set time that God had spoken to him. But in the process of time, he had to suffer. He had to understand what hatred was. That's right. Not only was he hated. When you look at uh, Genesis 37 in verse uh, 22, and Reuben said unto them, mm -hmm. Shed no blood, mm -hmm. but cast him into the pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand to him. So here, now he began, now they put him into a pit. And then when you look at verse 28, then there passed by Midianites, mm -hmm. merchantmen. And they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph oh, yeah. to the Ishmaelite. Now, his brothers hated him so bad that they uh, talked about him and lied on him and threw him into a pit and took his coat and mm -hmm. took a killed an animal and took the animal's blood and mm -hmm. put it on his father, oh, yeah. and, uh, put it on the coat and sent the coat to his father process the process of how a son feels about his father how a son feels about his mother the process so God has spoken these great words to him and God has promised him and it says uh, let's see what it says here And jo Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his fathers was a stranger. 
verse 2. And these are the generations, verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Verse 4. And when he, his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. And Joseph dreamed a dream told it unto his brother. And he said unto them, Hear ye, I pray ye the dream. Now this is a prophetic word going forward. God is speaking the prophetic word through pictures. God is not speaking the prophetic word with his mouth. God is speaking the prophetic word through the movie screen of the mind. Yes, <laughs> He's in an IMAX theater with great sound. Oh, yeah, la, 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 and God is reflecting off of the mind <laughs> and embedding it in the depth of his soul what he shall be. And he said, Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. Mm -hmm. And lo, my sheaves arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about and made obeisance. They were jealous because now God was raising him up. But let, let, let's, let's get away from this. But let's go back, say the matter with the process. The process. So here it is, God is speaking prophetically to him in a dream. God will speak to you in a dream. Yes, he will. Don't limit him. You have to be able to interpret the dream properly. You know, also, the microphone will take. You know, also, uh, one of the things that you have to understand, I believe, also is the fact that Joseph, uh, God was showing him the dream, mm -hmm. and when God, God was showing him the dream, because he was putting him in the process of showing him what was going to elevate him. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, he didn't understand how to interpret the dream. That's why when, when, the Holy, when God begins to reveal things to you prophetically, it's not always good to share with everyone, mm -hmm. even though it's family. But it's not always good to share. But because of the immaturity Amen. of him, mm -hmm. he shared, expecting them to be as excited yeah, as he was. And of course, people won't be excited about your process, nor will they be excited about your destiny. So, but I believe that um, God was showing him in a dream because that's what he was going to have to manifest interpreting dreams right. because he came to the place when he was in prison where he was able to interpret dreams mm -hmm. and so God was showing him I'm going to use this and this is also going to elevate you mm -hmm. because the dreams is what interpreting the dreams is what took him to another Amen. dimension mm -hmm. or to to a place of promotion Amen. when he good. was able to promote that. that's good prophet Amen. Mm -hmm. the Amen. metamorphosis so in other words, God was training him to be a dream interpreter of the spirit realm. At the same time, God was teaching him to be obedient through his suffering. Read. Change. Change is inevitable in the prophetic. There are times when God has to change certain things in your nature and mold your characteristics to bring you to the point of receiving his blessing. There are certain things that have to be broken down before they can be built up. A metamorphosis is needed. The prefix meta denotes after or between, among, to change in position. God has to bring a repositioning to bring you to his desired end. God has to alter you, alter your form, and give you redefinition. You are transpo transposed and transformed through the moving of his hand. Metamorphosis begins with a seed, the prophetic word. When a seed is planted, you cannot see its potential with the natural eye. You have to take a look 
at it from something beyond your natural scope to perceive its full capacity to produce. When the prophetic word comes into your life, you can't see it because it's a seed planted in your life to come forth at a specific time. After the seed is planted, because of the replication factor, seemingly no one can identify your gender nor your purpose. In natural life, that when a seed is planted in the woman and conception takes place, there is a replication factor where the cell begins to multiply rapidly as it moves towards a definition. And, and you know, I begin to think about this, and you, you think about metamorphosis when you plant that seed, you don't know what the process is. But here, years ago, before they could tell you whether it was a boy or a girl, mm -hmm. when that baby was born, you didn't know what it was mm -hmm. until you looked at it. Sometimes you don't know what you will become <laughs> until the prophecy manifests itself. That's good, Apostle. You, you, you see what yeah. I'm, and this is, we, we, we fight good. that process. Mm, fight the process. Mm. You know, let's go back to the chicken. The chicken is in the egg mm. that says it has stages of four, eight, 12 days, things mm. like, things nature like that. But I, I mean, that. so here it is, you, you know how it is when you yoke, open that, that it's just yolk. Mm -hmm. That's right. But it goes through a metamorphosis. Mm. When you look at the butterfly, it goes, when you look at the worm, it's a worm. And then the cocoon is formed. It's hid out of sight. The prophetic word is hid out of sight because it's spoken into the realm of the spirit of your faith. So not only is the prophetic word spoken, but it's spoken into the realm of your faith. So if your faith is where the prophetic word is in the realm of the spirit, then the realm of the flesh cannot affect it. But if your faith is not in the realm of the spirit where the prophetic word is, then your flesh fights it. So now sometimes God will allow your life to go through many changes. That's right. I remember... Uh, years ago, there were some changes that I went through. Sometimes God will allow your life to go through many changes, but it takes a person with the eye of the Spirit to perceive what God is doing. But your life is a mystery to a lot of folks, yet in the eyes of God, He knows who you're going to become. And God knows who you're going to become, even though you don't know. That's right. That's right. So God puts the process in front of you. Will you walk through this process? Will you go through this process? So it's like when God says for us to renew our mind, he says renew means Re means do again, right? So if he's saying renew our mind and the prophetic word shows you what you are, it speaks to your future and tells you what you are. So apparently you're already that, but you have to renew your, the prophetic word comes to renew your mind to what you already are, but unless you have the faith to go through the process, you can't walk it out. So when he says we have to renew our mind, so the 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 worm was already a butterfly, but it had to be renewed. But isn't it the worm that turns into the butterfly? Right. So the worm was already the butterfly, but it had to renew. It's mine. It's mine to who it was. And it had to go through the process. So you really have to, we come, we come here already in our destiny, but we have to back up to build character and faith wow. to go through the process. All right, right. Well, well, well. That was good. Well. Back up. <laughs> I mean, but that's the same thing. Repent. Repent. Restore. 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 Restore.
Renew. It says renew by the transform of the renewing of your, of your mind. mind. So you have to renew your mind. We have to bring our mind back to remembrance of who we were. So the metamorphosis takes place when we lock ourselves in the cocoon of the spirit. Wow. <laughs> and so now flesh is now being wrapped in spirit oh dear. that we may come forth as pure gold. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's good. Sure is. The bottom line here then is what when he said, and, and be, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the bottom line to the prophetic is to renew the mind of mankind. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's why mm -hmm. you can't be conformed to the world. Right. Because you can never walk in the newness being conformed to the world. Oh. You have to come out <clears throat> of the world in order to walk in the new. Well, you, you, know, you know, when we used to go to Miles Monroe, his conferences, can you imagine sitting all day like this? No hype. All day, you're getting this, his whole church, this is how he teach. All day. I mean, and, 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 and when you, these Bahamians, the development of these Bahamians is tremendous. Their youth department, I mean, they know the word the way Miles knows. Mm -hmm. So when you go to a place where your mind is being renewed, mm -hmm. it's hard to go back to an old. Oh, all right, oh, all right. Oh, because when you come to a place where the light is, where you, you're in the process of getting your memory mm -hmm. back, it's hard to go backwards Amen. when your mind is pressing you forward, you know, when your sight becomes so when we used to go to the Bahamas, we were in the Church of God in Christ, mm -hmm. nothing bad. But we were in, but because our destiny was apostolic and prophetic, we could not stay in religion. Mm -hmm. So when we stepped out, the process of time was for us to step out mm -hmm. of what we were introduced to, mm -hmm. to be renewed to who we were. So every time we would go to the Bahamas and we would sit in the classes and we would be in there all day, if we when we came back to California, we could not sit in a service because it was taking us backwards. Right. When we had already been threshed forward. And so when you know, when you're threshed forward, it's hard to go back because you, then you call in two days and it's like you fighting yourself. And it's like, okay, God, which one, which day are you in? And you know, even though he's, you know, the same yesterday, today, and forever, but he's not pushing us backwards, he's pressing us forward. So you always gotta go forward. And so sometimes it's hard to break out of that cocoon. So that's why, you know, the 40, when, when Joseph was in the dungeon, and God had given him that dream. Can you imagine the torment that was going through his mind? Wait a minute. I had this dream that I was going to be elevated. I had this dream that my that I that my brothers, um, their sheep was bowing to mine, but yet still they put me in this position. So you know the torment that you deal with in your mind. So the the mind is what will what has to be renewed. That's why. The atmosphere is set in demonic forces to keep you trapped mm -hmm. from being renewed in your mind. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. when the, second paragraph. When the prophetic speaks, there is a declaration of the end mm -hmm. and the beginning. Mm -hmm. It seems when the prophetic word comes, it announces the death of one season, mm -hmm. of one thing, and a new season of another. It often brings confusion right behind the declaration. A person gets a word that God is going to work in their family and how God is going to do so many good things and suddenly one day they begin to wonder if God really did speak mm -hmm. because it looks as though things Got worse. have gotten worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, no <laughs> but watch this, listen, you, you know, I hear, now, now, now I'm hearing your, your pastor, Fred Price, I'm hearing him 
Uh, there was a scripture that he was teaching on years and years ago in the book of James. I want you to look at this. Let's just listen to this in the book of James, chapter 1. Uh, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now he's to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Now here, the whole 12 tribes are scattered. But there's a prophetic word that's been spoken to them. Mm -hmm. He said, my brethren. Now the reason he can say my brethren, not because of skin tone, but because you could only be a brother mm -hmm. to a person that had experienced the same difficulty in life that you experienced. My brother, and count it all joy when you fall into divers and temptation. And here's the verse. Knowing this, knowing this, that the trying of your faith is patient. So even though that prophetic word come, the prophetic word isn't being tried. Your faith, your faith is. is. Your faith is. Wow. Mm -hmm. So let's go back. Some transformations call for combustion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you deal with certain chemicals, some type of burning mm -hmm. <laughs> occurs as they are fundamentally to produce another combustion. Formulated to produce another combustion. Composition. Okay. When they speak, the prophets are burning up certain things Ooh. in your life. Mm -hmm. They put a match to the area that need to be removed from us. The irritation of going through the fire is something no one wants to experience, but it's necessary. Control brush fires are necessary to maintain mm -hmm. the forest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we go through the process. Oh, yeah. and, and, and we don't want to go through it. Mm -hmm. Let's try to finish up here. Let's go down and read. Uh, we can. We cannot. We cannot get sidetracked by the things we feel during the metamorphosis process. Life is not yet fully formed. Thus you're aware of where you're going. Your hand is not involved in your destiny. At that point, but the hand of God is directing the action. Let him mold you and form you into his image. The mystery of becoming the prophetic word is silent, clandestine and obscured from your eyes. God is not going to let you in on what he is doing. The four seasons of the metamorphosis process are fall, winter, spring, and summer. The prophetic word is given in the fall. Things start to be removed from your life. They'll start falling off. You're unclothed of your identity. In the winter season of the prophetic metamorphosis, all one sees is a skeleton. Only the structure is visible, similar to the way of a tree, the way a tree looks during the winter months. Bereft of its foliage and that, and that makes the tree easily identified. No one can see the growth that is occurring with the naked eye. Actually, it looks barren, forsaken, during the springtime, a sprout shoots forth, giving a sense of new life. Finally, summer arrives. You'll find there is a fruitfulness, fruitfulness beginning to come forth. Your prophetic word comes to fulfillment. Then you'll be reaped in another fall to begin the seasonal passage of another word. Now watch this. It says every prophecy mm -hmm. must go through a season. Mm -hmm. But the length of that season mm -hmm. will vary from word to word. Mm -hmm. That is why it is important not to compare the processes. If you do, you will become discouraged that some words happen immediately, while others months and some years to fulfill. It really depends on where you are in the word. That's why, you know, sometimes uh, 
we have prophets that when they speak in the people's lives, things happen immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then other times you have to wait for that word. Other times it takes years. Mm -hmm. Because the word is bigger than you can imagine. Mm -hmm. yep. And if God say he's going to send you to the nation, what kind of process you think you're going to go? Come on, Apostle. Help somebody. You want to go to the nations with no care. Come on now. When God, watch this. When God say he's going to send a prophet to the nations, that means that you're going to come before prime ministers, mm -hmm. councilmen. You're going, to go, you're going to come before legislation. You're going to come before, when you, watch this, when you go into different countries, when you go into those African countries, those the first thing they want to do is take you to the fathers of the village or the prime minister or whoever the president is. Because they know you are from the states and they know you got a word from God. You can't go in there and mature. Sometimes I'm, I'm surprised that we go places and, and prophets, the prophet will release a word I, I have a habit of everywhere I go, I always say, uh, I always put profit up. There's only one place that I've been that that opportunity hasn't come in. But, and people will be just amazed. <laughs> and I can, I, you know what I've found? I've found that people want your gift. No, oh, yeah. But they don't want you. That's very true. You're right about it. They want your gift. They want what you have to offer. Yes, they do. But they don't want you. That's right. I've seen people treat my wife like that. Mm -hmm. When it's time to prophesy, she released that word. <laughs> They'll take the gift, but leave her at home. Mm -hmm. This is a spirit in Texas. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let me tell you something that I found out about. You cut that off. Let me tell you something I found out about some denominations. This is something that I found out. I found out that some denominations that